Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a delicious moist carrot cake with a twist. Anyone can make plain old carrot cake, but today I'm gonna to be adding in something special, rum raisins. Trust me, once you make this recipe, you're never gonna to wanna to go back to your regular carrot cake again. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is set my oven to 350. I'm doing this first because the cake doesn't take long to make and I don't wanna get behind. Now we're gonna move right on to one of the highlights of today's recipes, which are these golden raisins. Look at how delicious they look, but we're gonna make them even more delicious by infusing them with a dark rum. To do that, I'm gonna place the raisins in the rum in a microwave safe bowl, heat for two minutes, and then set aside for about 10 minutes while I prepare my carrots. I prefer to use a hand grater because it allows you to get smaller pieces of carrot, which are better for baking. If you're in a rush though, a food processor will work just fine. Just make sure that you get a blade that has a fine shredding option. Now that the carrots are done, it's time to get started on making the cake. The process for making this cake goes really quickly and is the same as making muffins. You'll see what I mean in a second. I'm gonna start off by putting my grated carrots into the mixing bowl. And I've got about a pound of carrots that I grated. Then I'm gonna add some oil for more moisture and I've got a half a cup of canola oil that I'm using. You can use any light oil that you wanna use. The next thing I'm gonna add is a stick of melted butter that I melted in the microwave and let cool. It's gonna add some more moisture to the cake. Then I'm gonna add in two teaspoons of vanilla extract and one cup of pineapples, crushed pineapples, that I drained completely before adding them in. Next, I'm adding in my rum raisins. At this point, they've soaked for about 10 to 15 minutes in the dark rum, which is plenty of time for them to be able to absorb the flavor of the rum. Heating the raisins and the rum in the microwave for a couple of minutes allowed the raisins to absorb the rum without actually having to sit overnight, which is what you see traditionally done with rum raisins. In the portions that I use for the rum raisins was one cup of golden raisin and a half a cup of dark rum. And you can use any dark rum that you like. You don't have to get anything expensive. Just use whatever dark rum you can find. There's really no point in spending a lot of money on the rum that's basically gonna get baked out, that alcohol is gonna get baked out. But you're definitely gonna taste that flavor of the rum each time you bite into one of those rum raisins. If you're a person who doesn't like the taste of rum or doesn't want alcohol in any of their recipes, you can definitely skip adding the rum. You just won't get the flavor that the rum adds to those golden raisins. Now next, I'm going to add my eggs. Now I've got three large eggs that I'm going to add to the mixture. And instead of adding them one at a time, I'm going to add all of them at once and then mix everything until it is just combined. And I don't want to go beyond the point that it is mixed. I'm just going to go until it is just combined and then I'm going to stop. And that only takes about a couple of minutes. Once I've got my wet ingredients combined, I'm going to move on to the dry. My first dry ingredient that I'm going to put into this bowl is two cups of all-purpose flour. And as I'm measuring, I'm making sure that my measuring cup is level. Then I'm going to add in a half a cup to that bowl of brown sugar. Then I'm going to add in my spices. And the spices I'm going to be adding are three teaspoons of ground cinnamon, one teaspoon of ground ginger, a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, a teaspoon of salt, and two teaspoons of baking soda for leavening. Then I'm going to add in the rest of the sugar. I've got a cup and a half of granulated sugar that I'm adding. And here's the fun fact. These spices don't just add flavor to the cake. They actually have some health benefits. Cinnamon has actually been shown to reduce inflammation. So if you're like me, you might even consider this carrot cake to be a bit of a health food. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is add one cup of walnut pieces to the flour mixture. And then I'm ready to move on to adding all of my dry ingredients to the wet ingredient. And I'm just going to dump all of those dry ingredients into this mixing bowl. I'm not going to add little by little. I'm going to add all of them at one time. Now you can see why I said making this carrot cake is the same as the muffin method because you just add your dry ingredients to the wet ingredients and you don't have to use a creaming method. So you want to make sure that you mix until it's just combined and then stop because one of the biggest mistakes you can make is over mixing your cake batter. Now I'm going to start to grease my nine inch round cake pans. So you can use butter or you can use baking spray. I'm actually gonna use baking spray instead of greaser butter because for me, using the baking spray allows the cake to release better. At least that's been my experience. So you can use whichever one that you wanna use. I'm gonna add some parchment rounds to the bottom, which is definitely gonna help with getting this cake released from the pan. It makes it a whole lot easier. And I'm not actually cutting these rounds. 
I actually bought them this way and I'll include a link for you so that you can easily find them. Now I'm going to take those pre-prepped cake pans and divide the batter between them. I'm not going to measure out the batter, but I'm going to eyeball it and try to get it as evenly between the two pans as possible. This isn't just so that our layers are the same height, but it also makes sure that the cakes bake evenly. Now, how long your cake is going to bake in the oven really is going to depend on the type of pan that you have. Some pans are going to allow you to bake it for 40 minutes, 45 minutes. Some are going to be like 30, 35 minutes. The pans that you see me using here, these are aluminum pans and they're not nonstick. These are going to be about 30 to 35 minutes, but I have used some other pans where it's been about 40 to 45. So now that my cakes are done, I'm just gonna take a knife and run it around the edge to make sure that it doesn't stick to the sides when I'm trying to release it from the pan. Before I turn these out onto the wire racks, I'm gonna let them cool in the pans for about 10 minutes. They're still gonna be really warm, but they're not gonna be completely too soft where they would just break apart. I'm first gonna use a plate and flip them over on the plate, and then I'm gonna transfer them over to the wire racks. And you'll see that the parchment allowed for a really easy release from the cake pan on the bottom. I need for these cakes to cool completely because the next thing I'm gonna be doing is making my cream cheese frosting. And I don't want to add frosting to a warm cake. The frosting could melt and I don't want that to happen. I like using these nine inch round wire racks, but if you don't have them, you can just use the racks in your oven. These cakes cool, I'm gonna go ahead and make the other key part of this recipe, which is the cream cheese frosting. Now this is something that's really easy to make and you can actually make it ahead of time and leave it in the refrigerator and just let it soften up when you're ready to make it. But it's really simple. I've got three eight ounce packages of cream cheese. I've got one stick of softened butter and I'm gonna mix that until it becomes combined. I'm gonna add two teaspoons of vanilla extract and then blend that again until it's combined. Then I'm gonna add powdered sugar. I've got four cups that I'm gonna be adding of powdered sugar, but I'm gonna add it a little at a time, maybe a cup or two at a time, just because I don't want all of the powdered sugar to be all over the kitchen. I want all of that powdered sugar to stay in this mixing bowl and in this frosting. So I'm gonna mix it until it's completely smooth, which takes about a couple of minutes. And then I'm ready to move on to actually getting my cake frosted. So I've got my cakes that are completely cooled and I'm turning them on to a cake stand, which turn, and it makes it easier for me to be able to decorate the cake and put the icing on. I think frosting a cake with cream cheese frosting is a little more difficult than buttercream, just because I think the cream cheese is a little bit more gooey than a buttercream. Taking the rest of the walnuts that I've got, which is about a cup, and adding them to the top, that's gonna give it some extra crunch and help with the presentation too. So there you have it, an easy moist carrot cake with a twist. And you can see just how easy it was to make. If you want any more dessert ideas, click this link and let me know in the comments what you think of this recipe.